Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome. This video is going to be the first of a two-parter. The two-parter is going to cover a method I developed for converting flat landscape pictures into a skybox. I, I know that there's proprietary software which does this, but I just had to figure out a way to do this using only open source software. Or my name's not open source tutor. So anyways, after a quite a long time of pondering and trying and experimenting, I finally came up with a solution like this. So I know this isn't the only solution, and if you know a better solution, or if you have any tips, just let me know in the comments. Also, for the sake of these videos, I assume that you already know the basics of what a skybox is and how it works. In this video, I'm going to first of all split the landscape into six images. The images will form the four sides of the box and the top and the bottom of the box as well. The tricky part is to make sure that the edges and the corners are seamless. I will be doing this in Inkscape, but I suppose you could use GIMP or Photoshop or Illustrator or another graphic software. So let's get started, shall we? I'm gonna start with this panorama picture. I took it while on holiday in Copenhagen, by the way. This is right next to the aquarium in Copenhagen, which is a pretty good aquarium and I recommend it, but I digress. Uh, I've moved it a bit so that the horizon is exactly in the middle. And I've also uh, added a bit of a plain uh, rectangle at the top uh, and also a plain rectangle for the ground. First of all, I create a new layer named Export Mask. And I draw four squares. I want the squares to each be 512 by 512 pixels. This corresponds to the size of the skybox faces. I also draw a square of 256 pixels by 256 pixels and I draw five rectangles of 512 pixels by 256 pixels. Next I arrange the squares like so. Make sure that the snaps are on because that makes it super easy to arrange the squares precisely. Now let's start with the easy part. I'm going to export the left face of the box. First of all, I open the export dialog. Then I pick the leftmost square, set the export mask layer to invisible, set the export name and click on export. I will immediately go to my files and import the PNG I just created. This step is not really necessary, but it's easier to keep track of what I've been doing. Next I repeat these steps for the front face, the right face and the back face. Zooming in, I see that the edge between the left and the front face is seamless. Also the edge between the front and the right face is seamless as well as the edge between the right face and the back face. But if I move the left face to the back, I see that there's an edge between them uh, which is not seamless. We are going to solve this problem using masks, but first I move the left face back to where it was. In order to use this mask, first I'm going to import this image, which I'm going to use as a clipping mask. You can download the clipping mask from the link in the description. Next, let's temporarily make the export mask layer invisible. I resize the clipping mask and cover the picture with it. Then I select both the mask and the picture and I go to Object Mask Set. 
As you can see, the mask makes the underlying pictures partially transparent. The dark parts become very transparent and the light parts remain mostly opaque. Now I go back to the export mask and export the partially transparent semi-ovals. I, I name them flap left, flap top one, flap top two, flap top three, and flap top four. And then I re-import them one by one. I will skip the bottom flaps as I mentioned before because the ground is very simple. But if you have a more complicated ground you could apply the same method to the ground. Next I create another square of 512 pixels by 512 pixels. And I color it the same color as the sky. And I rearrange the top flaps so that they cover the box like so. As for the left flap, I move it so that it covers the right side of the back face. Now when I move the left face next to it, we see that it is now seamless. I export the top face and I re-export the back face. As for the bottom, as I mentioned, in this case, the ground is so simple, so it's sufficient just to create a brown square. Now looking at the top, we see that we still need to use our mad GIMP skills to blend it out. But since none of the discontinuities are close to any of the edges or corners, this should be a relatively simple matter. So you can just use Photoshop or GIMP to blend out uh, that square. We might also need to do some extra blending in the back face, but in this case it turned out to be fine. But let's uh, have a look at what it looks like in 3D. I'm going to upload this to Unity as a quick way to test the box. Hooray! The seams are gone! Uh, now I don't want to be a party pooper, but there's still something that doesn't look quite right in this image. If we uh, look at the, these clouds, we see that the clouds uh, seem to be bent at a strange angle. They're folded somehow. This is because we've basically just taken four flat images and pasted them onto the sides of the boxes. In the next video I'm going to show you how to distort the images so that this weird angle disappears. Uh, so if you're watching this from the future, you can probably just click on the link here. But if you're watching this not that far in the future, you're just gonna have to wait a bit. Uh, so anyways, Thanks for watching. I hope it was a bit useful and or interesting. If so, why not help me out and hit the like button. See you next time. Bye bye.